Rahim. Today is our lecture number 14 and chapter number 2 differentiation and our today's topic is definition of a derivative. Okay, we start our lecture. First, I would like to recall some concepts. The first thing is dependent and independent variables. Independent variables. Okay. Now for a function y is equals to f of x. As x behaves independently, so we call it independent variable. This x is an independent variable. So we call it independent variable, but the behavior of y or f of x, the behavior of this y or this whole f of x depends on the variable x. So we call it the dependent variable. Now increment increment in x it's a new term and we say the change in the value of x either this change is positive or negative we called the increment of x and is denoted by del x this is your x and if we bring some increment in this x and this increment is denoted by delta x this is known as the increment in x this increment may be positive or negative now increment in increment in y the corresponding change in the dependent variable y when we bring some change in this x the corresponding value of y also shows some change so when we increase the value of x through this delta x of the value of y the corresponding value of y also change in the depend the the, the change uh, comes in the dependent variable of y or f of y and this change is uh, for the change of delta x in the value of x is called the increment of y so it is denoted by delta y what happened when y plus delta y f x plus delta x when we increase the value of x through this delta x the corresponding value of y also increase through this delta y and this this part is known as increment in y now average rate of change we have discussed this term in our previous lecture but here I am giving you a small intro of this concept average average rate of change average rate of change let f be a real valued function f is a real valued function valued function so real valued function and this is also continuous function you know very well about the concept of continuous the function whose value exists and whose positive and negative means left hand limit and right hand limit exist and when the defined function and this limit becomes equals we call that function a, a continuous function okay now let f be a real valued function and it is continuous in in some interval x x1 
in in some interval in the domain of the function which is a subset of this domain if you have some domain of a function means if you have a real valued domain your whole domain domain is a real number and you at any uh, interval of your this re, uh, real function uh, real domain the function is continuous then what we say we called then we have this quotient f of x1 minus f of x divided by x1 minus x and this is the average rate of change with respect to x simply i will explain it again if we have a function f which is a real valued continuous function on some open interval and this interval belongs to your domain of the function then we can use this quotient and this what is the quotient the difference the function at x1 minus at x from i'm um, using this interval's point so f of x1 minus f of x2 divided by the different of its point this exists with respect to x now instantaneous rate of change instantaneous rate of change okay now again let f is a real valued function and it is a real valued function and a continuous function in some open interval x and x1 which is again a subset of its domain of the function then <clears throat> then if limit exists limit x1 approaches to x what happened f of x1 minus f of x divided by x1 minus x is called at instantaneous rate of change now come to our today's topic that is a derivative of the function now when we called all this process is a derivative of the function derivative of a function okay now derivative of a function <clears throat> let's say let y is equals to f of x be a defined function it's a defined function in interval what x x plus delta x in this interval this function is defined then limit x approaches to 0 f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x the instantaneous rate of change of with respect to x is called derivative of function derivative of function f with respect to x and it is this whole procedure is known as f prime of x and this f with this small slash indicates that this is the derivative of your function so what we have done as you know this this uh, was your definition of instantaneous rate of change limit x1 approaches to x and then f of x1 minus f of x divided by x1 minus x and when you apply this uh, small change in your x here now limit x approaches to a zero f of x plus del x means there is a small increase in your x minus this this is the small point and this is a very slightly bigger 
uh, then the larger point as compared to this x because we uh, use this small change in that point. So here we have f of x plus del x minus f of x divided by the change. The change, the difference between these two points. We can write it x1 minus x or this f delta x. Delta x is also a difference of your two point, a small change between the two points. Okay. Now I will explain uh, I will uh, give you some simple steps through which you can easily find the derivative of any type of function. First, I will uh, tell you different notations for the derivative which we use. Notations, notations for derivative, derivatives. Okay, we have different type of derivative uh, notations for derivative. The first one is Leibniz. Leibniz notation. Leibniz notation is of the form dy by dx or any other function df by dx means the rate of change of this y with respect to this x or the rate of change of f with respect to x you means you are showing the rate of change of any independent variable with respect to dependent variable and this is the first notation of derivative and this type of notation is known as Leibniz notation the second one is Newton's Newton's in Newton method we simply write f of x with this little static whenever we see such type of representation we called it a Newton uh, notation of derivative then Lagrange's Lagrange notation and this Lagrange notation is of the type of f prime x which I have used here the last one is Cauchy this capital D is used for the derivative of x. Right? So these are the four different notations which we use for the derivatives. Okay. Now the four important steps which you can use to find derivative very easily. Now finding f prime of x from definition of derivative ok now if you have a given function f uh, y is equals to f of x so this is the your function and you know that the f prime of x means its derivative exists. f prime of x if it exists. Then we found four steps. Okay. Now the step one. What we will do? We find f of x plus delta x then step 2 simplify f of x plus delta x minus f of x step 3 divide this fraction this fraction f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x now the fourth step and the last step step
स्टेप फोर फाइंड लिमिट डेल्टा एक्स अप्रोचेस टू जीरो एफ ऑफ एक्स प्लस डेल्टा एक्स माइनस एफ ऑफ एक्स होल डिवाइडेड बाय डेल्टा एक्स सो दिस इज द मेथड ऑफ फाइंडिंग डेरिवेटिव एंड बाय यूजिंग दिस प्रोसेस वी कॉल्ड डिफरेंशिएशन बाय डेफिनेशन और बाय एबिनिशो और बाय फर्स्ट प्रिंसिपल हियर वी हैव द थ्री थ्री सॉरी when we find the derivative through these steps we called it differentiation differentiation by definition or by using ab initio method or first principle principles method so here we have these three different name but the method is same this method which consists of these two step these four steps we called this method differentiation of definition or by ab initio method or by first principle method the method is the same but it has these three different names of this same method now we start our exercise and you can see maybe the theory of this uh, method is looking very uh, difficult but when i start to solve this exercise you can see you can see that the okay one minute <coughs> okay now we start our exercise okay we start our exercise uh, exercise uh, 2.1 exercise exercise 2.1 the first question is find by definition the derivatives with respect to x of the following function defined as the first part is 2x square plus 1 now solution you can see the solution is very simple now here we have y is equals to 2x square plus 1 this is your first equation okay now the first step was find f of x plus del x so what you do you just increase bring increase in the in y as well as in x so what you will do y plus delta y and x instead of writing you replace okay replace y y plus delta y and x to x plus delta x so what happened y plus delta y is equals to 2x plus delta x square 
plus 1. So this is your equation number 2. You just bring small changes in your y and x. Instead of this y, you write here y plus delta y. In instead of this x, you just write x plus delta x. Okay. Now, this is your equation number 2. Now, subtract equation 2 and equation 1. So, what you will get? Y plus delta Y minus Y. Left hand side minus left hand side from this left hand side. And is equals to right hand side from this right hand side. So, Y plus delta Y is from second equation and minus Y is from first equation. Is equals to 2X plus delta X whole square plus 1, this is your second equation, and minus 2x square plus 1. This is from your equation number 1. Okay. Now, simplify this part. y will be cancelled with this y. Here you have delta y. And 2 this is the formula x square plus delta x square plus 2x delta x minus 2x square minus 1. Okay, and again when you simplify it more, you get 2x square plus 2 into delta x square plus 4x delta x minus 2x square. And simply 2 into delta x whole square plus 4x delta x. Take some common 2 into delta x and delta x plus 2x. And here we have delta y. Now divide both sides by delta x. So delta y divided by delta x is equals to 2 delta x into delta x plus 2x divided by delta x and this delta x is cancelled with this and you get 2 into delta x plus 2x. Take limit on both sides. Now by taking limit delta x approaches to 0 on both sides. Limit delta x approaches to 0. Delta y by delta x is equals to 2. Limit delta x approaches to 0. Delta x plus 2x. And when you apply the limit simply with you have a delta x apply 0. And then you get 2. 0 plus 2x and the answer is 4x and simply these are the four steps which you have applied on this question and get the simple result. So I will explain it again. Okay. 
Now this is the, your question number one. Here we have two x plus one. This is your two x plus one. So this is your step number one in which you have written y is equals to. Okay. Okay. This is your. You can see this is your step number. What's wrong with this? This is your step number one. Step number one, in which you have written y is equals to two x plus one. Now, when you bring the small change in x and y, this one is your step number two. Y plus delta y is equals to two x plus delta x square plus one. The remaining part is same. You have just bring the change in this x, right? The uh, then you subtract both equations from the uh, this. Um, uh what uh, from equation number 2 you subtract this equation number 1 and when you simplify you get this delta y is equals to this and you again when you uh, simplify it more you get this when you simplify it further then you get this result delta y Uh, delta y is equals to 2x delta x plus this, and this one is your third step, step number three, in which you have divide the both side by delta x. Now delta y divided by delta x is equals to this, and when you take the limit, this will become your fourth step. This one is your step number. Four. So by using these two, these four steps, you can simplify your question. I will solve some more questions for you to explain this concept. Okay. Now, the question number, uh, the third part of our question. Third part. Here we have one by under root x. Now step one. I will solve this uh, question step by step one. What we will do? Y is equals to one by under root x. Okay. Now the second step. We bring increments in y plus delta y, and instead of x, we write x plus delta x. Again, equation. This is our equation number one, and this is our equation number two. Subtract two from one. So y plus delta y minus y is equals to one by under root x plus delta x minus one by under root x. This y and y are cancelled with each other. Always in all question, this part will be the same. And when you uh, and simply you get delta y is equals to one by x plus delta x minus one by under root x. Now you have to simplify this part. So this the simple solution which comes in my mind that we take the Under root, uh, we take the LCM. Sorry, and what will be the LCM under root x into under root x plus delta x? And here you have x minus x plus delta x. Okay. Now you can rationalize this part. when you rationalize this part what happened under root x minus under root x plus delta x divided part divided by x into x plus delta x obviously we rationalize this part under root x plus under root x plus delta x 
divided by under root x plus x plus delta x and uh, simply you apply here the formula a plus b into a minus b is equals to a square minus b square so we get here under root x square minus under root x plus delta x square and this divided by under root x then under root x plus delta x into this x plus x plus delta x okay now in the uh, numerator part uh, this under root is cancelled with this power and we get x minus x minus delta x divided by under root x under root x plus delta x into under root x plus under root x plus delta x this x is cancelled with this x and simply we get this part we have here minus delta x divided by under root x under root x plus delta x and then under root x plus under root x plus delta x now step 3 divide both side uh, here you have a delta y here uh, divide both sides dividing by both sides by uh, what delta x so you get delta y by delta x is equals to minus delta x divided by delta x under root x under root x plus delta x into under root x plus under root x plus delta x okay now this will be cancelled with this and finally you get minus 1 divided by under root x under root x plus delta x into under root x plus under root x plus delta x this now the last step step 4 in which you apply limit limit delta x approaches to 0 on both side you apply this limit on both side and when you apply this limit simply here you have limit delta x approaches to 0 delta y by delta x is equals to limit delta x approaches to 0 minus 1 by x x plus delta x under root x plus under root x plus delta x and when you apply the limit you get minus 1 by under root x again under root x because this delta x becomes 0 and the inside of this bracket we get under root x plus under root x and finally we have minus 1 by minus 1 by how many times we have this this become under root x square and the inside of bracket we have 2 under root x and then minus 1 by x 2x under root of x or in other word if we add the powers 1 by 2 x 1 plus 1 by 2 we get minus 1 by 2 x power 3 by 2 and this whole part this whole part is now becomes equals to dy by d x when we have delta y by delta x with this limit then this whole part 
becomes equals to dy by dx means we calculate here the derivation the change of y with respect to x is equals to this whole answer so this is the solution of our this third part and uh, now i will solve some this uh, 11th part for you okay this x i here we have y is equals to x m where m is any natural number so what is the step one y is equals to x m first equation step two y plus delta y is equals to x plus delta x whole power is m and this is our equation number two and what we do we subtract equation one from equation two so y plus delta y minus y is equals to x plus delta x power m minus x m and y this y and this y are cancelled with each other and we have delta y is equals to x plus delta x m minus x m okay now here we use by binomial theorem binomial theorem okay now delta y is equals to x m plus m 1 x m minus 1 into delta x plus m 2 x m minus 2 delta x square plus up to delta x m minus 1 delta x power m and minus x m the last term of this this is binomial theorem for x plus delta x whole power m and minus x m is for this part okay if we take delta x common x m and this x m are cancelled with each other and from the remaining uh, terms we take delta x as a common and we get what we get m1 this term x m minus 1 this delta x goes here as a common then plus m2 x m minus 2 delta x power 2 1 x is we have taken here as a common and the remaining is delta x with one power plus up to here we have just delta x power this m what uh, one uh, delta x is we have taken here common so here we have uh, m minus one delta x power m minus one one minus is subtracted from this term so this is the uh, simplification of our step 2 now step 3 what we are doing in step 3 we divide both sides by uh, this uh, delta x so when we divide delta x on both side delta we have delta y by delta x and when we divide this delta x this delta x cancel with delta x and simply we get m1 x m minus 1 plus m2 
x m minus 2 delta x plus up to plus delta x power m minus 1 okay now the step 4 is now in step 4 <coughs> we take limit limit delta x approaches to 0 on both sides and uh, when we apply this limit limit delta x approaches to 0 delta y by delta x is equals to limit delta x approaches to 0 <coughs> this m x m minus 1 plus m 2 x m minus 2 delta x plus 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 delta x power m minus 1 and when you apply the limit this m x m minus 1 here you have limit 0 0 multiplied by any factor gives you 0 plus 0 so the answer is m x m minus 1 so this is the answer of your question and uh, the last part which I am going to solve for you that is okay now this is 1 by x m when the power is in denominator term so step 1 y is equals to x minus m you bring this power to here so this is your first equation now step 2 we bring a small change y plus delta y is equals to x plus delta x with this minus m and uh, this is your equation number 2 subtract 1 from 2 so here you get delta y is equals to x plus delta x minus m minus x minus m so you just apply here the binomial theorem also for the negative powers so when we take x minus m as a common inside we have 1 plus delta x by x power minus m when we take x minus m as a common from this factor th this type of change occurs in this inside the fraction and minus x minus m And again, if you take this x minus m as a common, so you have 1 plus delta x divided by x whole power minus m minus 1. So, you have taken this minus, uh, here we have x minus m and x minus m. So, we take this x minus m as a common now <clears throat> now we can apply the binomial theorem binomial theorem is a simple theorem which we have uh, studied now we have studied this um, theorem in detail in our first year and you know when uh, binomial behavior how binomial behaves when the power is positive natural number and how it uh, behaves when we have some negative uh, power so by using by using binomial theorem nominal theorem delta y is equals to x minus m now inside this we can apply binomial theorem 1 plus minus m delta x divided by x 
प्लस माइनस एम माइनस एम माइनस वन डिवाइडेड बाय टू फैक्टोरियल डेल्टा एक्स बाय एक्स होल स्क्वेयर नो नीड टू राइट मोर टर्म्स जस्ट दिस टू थ्री टर्म्स आर इनफ अप टू माइनस वन अप टू दिस हेर यू आर नॉट अप्लाइंग दिस बाइनोमिल थ्योरम द बाइनोमिल थ्योरम वी अप्लाइड ऑन दिस फैक्टर सिंपली हेर वी हैव द दिस माइनस वन this this binomial goes to up to infinity then minus 1 okay now delta y is equals to x minus m okay now again this plus 1 and minus 1 are cancelled with each other and here we have just this minus m delta x by this x plus minus m minus m minus 1 by 2 factorial delta x by x whole square plus up to so on now if we take delta x by x is a common from this bracket the first term become equals to minus m then minus m minus m minus 1 by 2 factorial delta x by x plus up to so on okay now you divide both side now step 3 step 3 divide both sides by delta x delta y by delta x is equals to this delta x will be cancel this so here we have x minus m and divided by x means we have x minus m minus 1 and the rest of bracket is same and now we apply the last step step 4 step 4 in the fourth step we apply the limit now the limit delta x approaches to 0 delta y by delta x is equals to limit delta x approaches to 0 x minus m minus 1 into minus m plus minus m minus m minus 1 divided by 2 delta x by 2 plus up to so on and uh, when we apply the limit we have minus x m minus 1 inside we have minus m when we apply this limit over here 0 multiplied by this factor gives you 0 plus 0 up to so on simply you get minus m x minus m minus 1 and this whole part now we can write instead of this part we can write dy by dx so dy by dx is equals to minus m into my x power minus m minus 1 so this is the simply the all the question which we have done by using this ab initio method principal method or finding the derivative through uh differentiation method so these are the different names of the same method in question number 2 here we have find dy by dx from first principle no difference between first principle and by definition method so both methods are same you uh, you can apply the same steps for these four steps you can apply on all the question and uh the same sentence if you have any problem you can contact me on my whatsapp number thank you very much